I said, this is a very different environment for our meeting and would like to ask for patience we adopt this, as we adopt this platform. In order to help with this meeting, I would like to request that all members of the public please mute their microphones and turn off their cameras till they are requested to speak. Each item will be heard in the order they are on the agenda. We will hear each speaker at the beginning of that item with objectors to speak first and then the applicant being given the right of reply. With each report, we will hear from, hear from the planners firstly, then we'll hear from the submitters, both speaking in support and against the applicant, and then we'll hear from the applicant. I'll then put the recommendation forward for consideration. That recommendation, recommendation will be debated by the planning committee. Finally, the recommendation will be put to the vote. I have been provided with a list of people to, who wish to speak for the different applications. When I call your name, please take your microphone off mute, turn your camera back on before you begin your presentation. You'll have three minutes, or we're pretty flexible on that, but three minutes is about the time. Um, and a warning, will, the time frame will be given when you have 30 seconds to go. Thank you all for your patience and consideration in these different times, and I'm sure we'll get through it pretty well. Until further notice, all meetings conducted by Strathbogie Shark Council will be virtually. Teams using and live streamed on our website at www.strathbogie.vic.gov.au. This ensures we are meeting the Victorian Government's social distancing requirements to slow the spread of coronavirus, COVID-19, and help keep our communities safe. We encourage all community members to watch the meeting online, given we have had to close the public gallery to a further notice following legal advice around how to comply with the COVID-19 social distancing rules. People wishing to make submissions for items on the commanding planning committee agenda may do so by submitting a further written statement, which will be read by the chair, requesting to make their submissions via telephone, or making their presentation via a pre-recorded video that is sent to council prior to the meeting. And the planning department will be in touch with relevant parties prior to the meeting so that appropriate arrangements can be made. And I understand that that is actually what has happened. I acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which we are meeting. I pay my respects to their elders past and present. For those of you who are following the agenda, um, we're now, we've just completed one and two. We're on to three, which is apologies. Any apologies, please? Yes, Julie. To you, Mr Chair, I'd like to put in the apology for Councillor Amanda McLaren, our Mayor. She is unable to attend today and also Phil Howard, our Director of Community and Planning. Thank you. Any other apologies? Okay, confirmation of the minutes of the Planning Committee meeting held on Tuesday the 21st of July 2020. I have them here in my hand. Um, Councillor Mason, moved by Councillor Mason, seconded by Councillor Williams. All those in favour? Um, now, are we doing this? I'm not quite sure. Are we doing this by cards? We are. Right, okay. Right. So how many can I count? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's carried. Six love. Thank you. Disclosures of interest. No disclosures of interest. So we move on to our, our um, planning reports. We go to the first one. 
which is uh, in the hands of our principal planner, Melissa Crane. There she is. Uh, 6.1 planning permit application number P2018-022-01. To amend a planning permit for the use and development of land for a dwelling, shed, pothouse, well-being facility and group accommodation. 575 Balmatham, North Road, Balmatham. So, Melissa, thank you. Thank you, Mr Chair. This application is an amendment to an existing permit to change parts of the proposal and some conditions that apply to the permit. The amendments in, uh, to include ad, um, advertising signage at the front of the property and also a caretaker's dwelling to help support the group accommodation part of the proposal and to change um, the staging of the development as well as the location of the tents on the site that have been approved. Council officers have all taken, also taken the opportunity with this amendment to fix some of the clerical issues on the permit in terms of the um, definition of group accommodation and um, reclassifying it as caravan and camping park as per the propo proposal um, for the glamping tents. And they've also, we've also um, incorporated some additional conditions in the permit to address and address some of the grounds of um, objection and some of the concerns raised or some of the things raised that came up with the changing of the staging of the proposal. For example, the conditions have been included in the permit in relation to signage on the boundaries of the property in response to some of the concerns raised by one of the by the objector. There's also been um, some condition a condition placed on there in relation to drainage and a condition in relation to landscaping. We've also included um, some change. There will also include some changes to the numbering, etc., of the permit to reflect those additions and changes. And um, the, sorry, pardon me. The um, objection raised a number of concerns, predominantly with um, signage, drainage and landscaping. Some of those have been addressed, as I've mentioned, in relation to those conditions that were placed on the property, on the conditions. And some of it's in relation to the location of the tents. The tents themselves, um, whichever decision council make at this point, the applicator, the permit will still retain its current approvals. So all we're really considering as part of this proposal at the moment is whether or not it's okay to change the staging, the advertising signage and the location of the tents and add that caretaker's dwelling to support the accommodation use on that property. Um, so respectfully, the recommendation is to issue a notice of decision to grant an amendment to the permit. Thank you, Councillor Little. Thanks, Melissa. Now there has been one objection to this. Tony, uh, wish to speak to it, and I hope somehow he'll come on board. How are you there, Commissioner? Yes. Tony, yes, I can hear you and see you. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, I would like to, and I'm not sure whether you got my uh, last objection or just some updated notes in regard to my concerns that, that would have been sent by Melissa today. Uh, you should have received that about lunchtime today and to clarify certain points in regard to the moving of the tentage from where it was originally approved in July 2018 to where the pads have been and the cabling have been run without a permit at this point in time. I have proposed uh, in regard to the tentage of moving them to the eastern side of the hill where I believe they would be better located. However, failing that, I am quite happy to see the tentage retained where they were originally approved in July 2018. My concerns are in regard to the tents where they're being proposed at this point, that they run in a straight line from about 194 contour line down to about 190. There is a considerable fall. The water will concentrate and flow down into my property. Unfortunately, I would believe that it will cause some erosion and that is one of my main concerns. 
the gentleman, the owner, who I have not met, has decided he needs to relocate the tentage because of noise from Hume Freeway. Well, quite frankly, he would have known that two years ago. So I don't quite know why he now has decided that he wants to put the tents where they are. Also, he has put them there, or started to put them there, without a permit. I am concerned that we, or you gentlemen, ladies, will be retrospectively approving something that's already been started. I do not wish the tents to run in a line where they are proposed in this amendment. I rest my case. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tony. The applicant, um, Raj Kuran, has written to me and has requested that I read out uh, the following letter. Uh, and I have read it out to myself, and it takes about three and a half minutes. If we can get to it. So just bear with me, please. My name is Raj. We recently applied for an amendment to the permit issued in 2019 P2018-022. When we saw this land for sale, when we visited, we had a vision to develop this abandoned quarry land and reclaim its flora and fauna by also appreci appreciating the view from the hill. A business idea that is eco-friendly and also helps in developing the regional tourism and business opportunities of your eye. We have stayed on that vision with the focus till today, spending around $150,000 in terms of planning, erosion control, planting trees and plants with the help of local businesses in and around Euroa for the last two years. In the initial planning permit, the stages were not well were not well defined, so we had to launch an amendment with a separate caretaker's accommodation toilet block and also relocate the tents due to strong winds and practical difficulty in servicing them. Also, the cut and fill to make a flat surface for the tents were more than 900 millimetres. So we decided to move the tents to the west side of the farm. The tents are approximately 28 metres away from the western boundary in the initial permit granted in February 2019 and in the amendment requested. The whole project is split into two stages. Stage one will have six tents and a caretaker's accommodation with a toilet block. All safety and necessary requirements advised mentioned in the permit by the Shire will be implemented in stage one. Lavenders planted will take two years to attain maturity for oil extraction. There will be an on-site caretaker to facilitate guests during their stay, follow and ascertain safety measures and take care of the lavender farm. Stage two will have a shed for oil extraction and a house for four guest bedrooms. At this stage, guests will have an option to select staying in the rooms during colder months or in tents during summer. This will also be an attraction point for the wellness centre as we can provide a year-round solution. We received objections from our neighbour for the initial application. We changed our plans to reflect his recommendations for tents, sheds and effluent fields. We have received objections for the amendment as well. We have considered his objections as, improve, as improvement suggestions and implemented most of them during the initial application and now. As per his objections and the chief planner's suggestion for drainage, we employ a consultant to study the current situation requirement and advise improvement plans on the same. All the suggested plans are attached to your consideration. We are more than happy to implement them as part of the planning permit conditions. If the committee members are interested or if there is a requirement for them to visit the site, um, we welcome that. We have already made all efforts to negotiate a suitable arrangement for the objections. I humbly request the committee to grant the amendment so that we can carry on with the project that we have planned to reopen for Christmas. Should you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. He's given his phone number and his email address. Thanks a lot for your patience and time taken to go through the application, plans, objections, and their responses. A separate mention and appreciation for the continuous support from the planning team 
and Shah administration team during the COVID-19 tough time. Signed by Raj Karun. So I'll put the recommendation forward. Um, it is recommended that council resolve to issue a notice of decision to amend a permit in accordance with the officer's recommendation. Would someone like to move that? Moved by Councillor Thompson. Sorry, by Councillor Mason. Seconded by Councillor Thompson. Councillor Mason. I mute your mic. We can't hear you. Is that better? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I note first up. I note the objection, and I note that this is an amendment uh, to the original um, proposal to include a caretaker's accommodation, a toilet block, signage, the number of people allowed, how the development will be staged, and the location of the glamping tents. The um, I also note that it is an ab abandoned old quarry, and um, I. I can't see where this is a an issue, you know, like having this go ahead and the, these amendments. So um, I will be supporting this. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Mason. Uh, Mason, I'm sorry. I've got your photos muddled up. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I think, as, uh, as was noted, so the, what we're considering here is an amendment to a permit. The permit was uh, established a couple of years ago for the facility. Um, the, the works that are being proposed uh, within the uh, amendment, uh, I think, are reasonable and have been thought through and considered. Um, I know um, the objectors' concerns and those concerns that remain outstanding, particularly in relation to uh, water flow and erosion. Um, as the applicant noted in their letter, they have engaged uh, consultants to advise them on that. Uh, and I do note in particular uh, Condition 6, uh, which has been applied or would be applied if we approve this um, uh, permit. And Condition 6 uh, is that the works hereby permitted must not change the rate or direction of stormwater flow across the property boundary. So the intention uh, of, the, of the council is clear. Um, not to uh, have uh, diverted water flow into adjoining properties, uh, and I'm sure uh, were that to occur, a corrective action uh, would be imposed upon the applicant. So I think the application, the amended for the amendment to the existing permit is reasonable, and I'll be supporting it. Thanks, Councillor Thompson. Any other speakers? If not, I'll put the recommendation the council resolved to issue a notice of decision to amend a permit in accordance with, his, with the officer's recommendations, noting that there are nine recommendations listed there. So all those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. Thank you. All those against? That's carried unanimously. We move on. to 6.2, again in the hands of Melissa. And it's planning permit application number P2019-132, use and development of land for a dwelling at 77 Kettles Road, Bailiston. Melissa. Thank you, Council Little. This application is for the construction and use of a dwelling on a 14.04 hectare lot in Bailiston on Kettles Road. It was the subject of a um, subdivision a couple of years ago. It's a vacant allotment. It's currently used for um, uh, extensive horticulture. The proposal is to um, have a hay and chaff production farm to, uh, with the dwelling on the site. The area is more generally used on that part of in that part of the locality for rural living purposes, but the um, it's also within a fairly strong equine area of around Nagambi. So there is a demand for the hay and chaff production that they are proposing as part of this application. We did advertise the application to nearby and adjoining owners, no objections were received. The application has been assessed to be um, a reasonable response to the site and in accordance with the purpose and the decision guidelines of the farming zone. And it's respectfully recommended that an 
a planning permit be granted for the dwelling on this allotment. Thank you, Councillor Little. Thanks, Melissa. As you has been noted, there were no objections to this. So do we have no uh, submitters to speak to it or for it? So I'll put the motion and it is recommended that Council resolve to grant a permit in accordance with the officer's recommendations, of which there are 24, plus three planning notes, one environmental health note, and one engineering note. Someone like to move that as such? Thank you, Councillor Gardner. A seconder? A seconder, Councillor Williams. Thank you. Councillor Gardner. Mr Chair, thank you very much. Uh, although this is an area that is smaller than the uh, recommended for rural subdivisions, I think it's a good use of the area. Uh, that country there uh, has got the potential to produce uh, high yields of lucerne and being where it is in the heart of the equine industry, I, I think it is a good outcome for that particular block of land. Thank you, Councillor Gardner. Councillor Williams. Unmike un your mic, Williams. Councillor Williams, your mic. How's that? You hear me now? That's better. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I concur with what Councillor Gardner said. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a privileged little area in that area. And uh, I agree that uh, anything could grow over in that country. So with Lucent and whatever the case may be, it's in it's in the horse area or the capital of Victoria. So uh, I support it very well, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Any other people like to speak for or against? If not, I shall put that recommendation that Council resolve to grant a permit in accordance with the officer's recommendations, and which there are 24 and five total of five planning notes. All those in favour? All those against? So that's carried unanimously. Thank you. We move on. To 6.3. Uh, Melissa, you're again. <laughs> Planning permit application number P2020-027. Two lot subdivision and development of land for a dwelling at 14 Granite Court, Euroa. Melissa. Thank you, Councillor Little. This application is for a dwelling and a two lot like subdivision. Okay, is that better? A lot better. Okay, so this application is for a dwelling and a two lot subdivision on the lot at 14 Granite Court within Euroa. The application for the dwelling itself is not of concern to council officers. We do support having a single dwelling on that allotment. The concern has come um, from the subdivision element of the proposal. Because it's a joint application for two um, for both, at once we have to, ref the recommendation is to refuse both elements because we can't split them out as part of, in an approval process at this, as a single application. The application was advertised and received, received six objections from within Granite Court to the proposal. And the planning scheme is fairly clear in relation to neighbourhood character and how we can consider it, particularly within the rural fringe of Euroa. And that has been gone into detail within the report, but the Euroa neighbourhood character study is quite clear about maintaining those larger allotments with the large yards and garden setting that can be achieved on blocks of the size that are within Granite Court is supported within that area. Um, and subdividing this allotment will undermine that broader character. It also would set um, a fairly strong precedent in relation to accessing properties off of the street to the east, which is Armstrong Street, which is not of a high standard and there is some drainage concerns should we start having properties coming off of that part of the road network. 
The design of the struct of the subdivision when it was first created for the 24 lots was built to accommodate the 24 lots which are there currently. And any further intensification of that development does raise some concerns with how council's infrastructure will cope in the broader um, area. It is respectfully requested that an, a refusal to grant a permit be issued um, based on the range of grounds that have been put into the report, but are essentially in relation to that neighbourhood character and the potential impact on Council's infrastructure. Thank you, Councillor Little. Thanks, Melissa. Um, there, there are a number of objections to this. Two people have wished it to be heard today, uh, Lorraine Lease and Peter Ford. So. Lorraine, would you like to kick it off for three minutes? Yes. I've got a real echo. Can you hear me clearly or are you getting an echo? No, we've got a big... It's, it's unmuting by itself. Do you have an echo that I'm getting or is that just my end? I think I have a technical problem with this. Mr Chairman, I think you'll find that Lorraine, I see two, two photos of Lorraine on my screen. Unmute, Malcolm. Can you hear me now? Yeah. That, that is, that is, <laughs> and there's that echo. I'll, I'll, log, I'll, I'll log out and then I'll log back in and hopefully the problem will be solved. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. And there's no echo. <laughs> no, well done. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, First of all, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, so, yes, my name is Lorraine Lees and I live with my husband at 21 Granite Court, which is the new red brick Californian bungalow at the very end of the court. Our house is very close to the land where the owner has lodged a request to subdivide, so this will have a big impact on us. Um, I wish to speak in order to oppose the application to subdivide. I've read the agenda for the meeting and I agree with all of the opinions that have been raised, uh, including the views and the understandings that this development was to be for low density residential development, the impact on the amenity of the area, the issues that Melissa raised relating to the current erosion of the bitumen in Armstrong Street, uh, and the very significant danger associated with those very deep drains. And I've actually discussed with Councillor Mason, who is our councillor, um, about trying to do some repairs to that road as, as soon as possible because it is getting to be quite dangerous. So all of the issues uh, that were raised in the report to oppose this subdivision are ones that we agree with. There is one item that has been overlooked. Um, hopefully everyone's received a, a photograph of the main advertising board that was used for this estate. Have we all got that? I think majority have, yes. Yeah, so I'll just I'll just go back to, to that. Um, so I'll just, I had a few notes on this. So on that board, the land sizes were very clearly stated, including the minimum sizes. So buyers 
uh, would have looked at that board, which we certainly did, and have formed a very clear opinion about the minimum and the maximum size. Um, I don't think anyone would have been expecting to see two small allotments in Granite Court. Um, everyone would have been expecting to see blocks of land ranging from a half acre to one acre. There was no mention of anything smaller than a half an acre. There is also nothing on the sign that mentions the possibility of subdivision or STA. Um, no, none of that was mentioned. And I don't think anyone would have expected that this would have been an issue that we would have had to deal with either. So when we looked at that particular board, we certainly formed the opinion that this estate uh, that is going to have some large blocks of, uh, of an acre and the smallest blocks will be a half acre. Um, the description of the estate with its walking tracks and wetlands also gave most people the impression that this was going to be a low-density rural development with the addition of these extra open spaces. We've spoken to all of the people who live in Granite Court, along with other people who live in other parts of this state, and everyone that we've spoken to bought the land um, on the assumption that the land sizes on that advertising board would remain. It had all the characteristics of the low density housing and that is why people chose to purchase these blocks of land. No one, no one was looking for the traditional quarter acre block or even smaller. Um, we just finished renting a, a house that was on a block of 500 squares. We're right um, close to three minutes. Yeah. So, um, so we... we, we, we uh, we, along with most other people, never expected to see a subdivision like this. We feel that uh, those minimum sizes were misleading. Um, we always thought that that minimum size would be half an hour, uh, so half an acre. This was also on the material that we received from the real estate company as well. Uh, we have a very clear line of sight to that uh, subdivision, so it would certainly be a negative visual impact for us. And from experience that we've had, we know that there will be problems with flooding uh, and the, the drainage. Lorraine, um, I'm going to pull you up there. Just yeah. So we, we, no one, no one expected, particularly in Granite Court, that a subdivision like this would ever go ahead. And with that minimum land size that was clearly stated, that was one of the main factors that we all uh, took into consideration when we purchased our land. Thank you very much. Thanks. No problems. Okay, the next person to speak um, as an objector is Peter Ford. You there, Peter? Peter Ford, you coming in? I know he was intending to because he dropped us off some notes. So, yep. Uh, and he does struggle with technology. Right. Kristen, are you uh, available? Have we got Peter? Have we got Peter? Right. Thank you. I don't think it'll be long. I hope it won't be long. Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll just be patient under the circumstances. It's all new to us, or most of us.
Yes. So he might, uh, in the next half minute, might pull in. We'll give him half a minute. Um, I've got a phone number. Would you like me to ring him? And I know he's got his daughter staying with him and she's uh, very tech savvy. She should be able to sort the problem out. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just mute while I do it and hopefully he'll appear fairly soon. Just give me a couple of minutes. I'll give him a call. Okay. Thanks, Lorraine. That's okay. It's okay. Are you there, Malcolm? Yes, Lorraine. Um, they've got some technical problems. We decided the quickest thing for her is uh, with their close proximity to us, she's literally just going to run over to our place and she'll take the chair that I'm sitting on and she'll join in from my spot. Okay. How long will that take? Oh, about two minutes. <laughs> I'll just go and open the front door and she'll be there, I reckon. So I'll, I'll just duck away and open the door and, and you'll see her log in. She, she was not far away. Okay, well, we've waited this long. That'll be fine. Hi. I suppose it depends how far it is, isn't it? How long two minutes it takes? If it's 800 metres, that could be a world record. Okay. Just take a step over there. Okay. And take oh. yourself down there and okay. both speaker and camera's on, so you'll appear down there. Okay. This is Malcolm Little. Hi, Malcolm. Hello. <laughs> Sorry Hello. about that. I don't know why, but I got kicked off the Teams thing. That's quite okay. So what was sorry, what was your first name? My name's Mary Ann Ford. Peter Ford is, is my father, and I'm speaking on behalf of him. He just felt okay. a bit um, overwhelmed by it. Thanks, Marianne. After all that, you've only got three minutes. <laughs> oh, no! I've got to catch so my please, breath. Yeah, please talk. Please talk. <laughs> I'll try read as fast as I can. You go. So, thank you, Chairman. Um, the subdivision of Granite Court was approved by Council in 2007, clearly and concisely intended to regulate for open living, with 24 blocks sold between a quarter acre and one acre in size. Strathbogie Planning Scheme Clause 22.02 states future use development of land to demonstrate consistency with structure plan. Point 4.1 requires continuous residential development without leapfrogging or ad hoc development, i.e. no subdivision of original lots. Point 5.6.1 residential zone one is noted as preferred, it limiting minimum size and therefore not encouraging residential land development at the level of intensity supported at state and local strategic level for this size. Once more, no close settlement size blocks. The pro proposed sub subdivision of lot 14 would open frontage to Armstrong Street, which is a dangerously narrow roadway, even worse at Strathbogie Road intersection. There is inadequate drainage, no footpath frontage, Lot 14, no provision for off-street parking and apparently no advice given to local residents of Armstrong Street for that application. 
The 24 lots in Granite Estate were sold fenced and it was nowhere stated or told to the landowners that anything but low density development was permitted. Purchases and buildings were made on this basis as approved by council. The purchase of our land, lot 17, would not have been made by us given the negative impact a subdivision directly opposite us would have on our now existing home value and the quality of our living. There is a, com a commune of ejecting single dwelling landowners surrounding lot 14 protesting this possible creation of two small lots, which I want to point out may be then sold on and walked away from. There are plenty of alternatives to subdividing lot 14, witness a recent large residential development opposite the golf course, offering 96 blocks of various smaller sizes, a current range of local blocks and housing for sale, an intended subdivision of Vidler Street, and also the possibility of selling lot 14 to buy and demolish an older home to rebuild on a more convenient sized block. <laughs> it must be finally asked, if the sudden allowance of a small close living subdivision, sub subdivision, once existing landowners have already built and invested in this open living single dwelling space, would give these owners a reason to seek compensation as the character of the neighbourhood is affected and so is the value and the reason why we actually purchased into this subdivision, into this area. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, mary -Ann. Okay, sorry. Okay, you're right there. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, Thank now, you, Mum. The, the Thank you, Mum. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Thank you. Well. Oh. No, that was the easiest thing I was figuring out. Yeah, oh. And I understand also wishes to speak, and that's Lee Thistleway. So, Lee, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me yep. and can you see me? Yes, can't see you, but we can hear you. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I have my camera off. Would you see me? I've just tried changing the selection. Has that changed things? Can you see me? I can't. Can anyone else? No, generally no. You can definitely hear me, but you can't see me. Mm -hmm. Can we proceed on that basis? Because I sure can. can. Sure can. Yeah, good. Thank you. Okay, so um, I just wanted to touch base. We didn't get the planning report, obviously, or access to it till last Friday. Although we knew the recommendation would be a refusal, we didn't know the reasons why, the specifics of that until last Friday. Um, the issues raised by objectors have already been responded to in written submissions by the town planner, landography that I engaged, and myself. So today I just wanted to try and address some of the non-compliance issues in the uh, Shire's report. The applicant was Troy Spencer from Landography, a professional town planner, that my husband and I are the ones who want to build a smaller retirement home in the township. You might ask when we, why we bought the land when we feel it's too big for us, but this is because it's all that was available. There is very limited vacant residential land for sale in Euroa at the moment. In fact, we've been looking for a couple of years. The siting of the land was important to us. We wanted the long, northerly aspects so that we could build an energy efficient home. We did lots of research before we we committed to buying the land or committed to this development. We met with the council and many other professional bodies. And we felt confident we would be able to subdivide to a more manageable size and sell off the Armstrong Street block to provide some funding for our new home. One of the issues that's been raised is the stormwater drainage and the condition of Armstrong Street. But the new site is not affected by the flood overlay and there are 11 existing properties already off Armstrong Street in its present condition. We don't believe the ponding issues at 18 Granite Court should be attributed to our site and feel that the subdivision was known and feel that if the subdivision was known to have a likely impact on flood and drainage in Armstrong Street, this should have been considered as part of the original 2007 approvals. The open swale drains and the absence of footpaths are common in the township, especially when it's transitioning to the rural zone. So again, we don't agree that major infrastructure upgrades are needed as a result of our proposal. I'd also like to point out that lot seven of this estate development has already been subdivided. This is number one, Armstrong Street. It has been subdivided um, and it has been, there is now a second crossover associated with it accessed off Armstrong Street. This has set the precedent for the estate and for the area and we would like to know why if this subdivision was allowed, ours is to be refused. The main issue overall though seems to be neighbourhood character. 
the size of the proposed lot and therefore the visual bulk or density seems to be the issue. The average lot size quoted of 2619 is just in relation to the lots in Granite Court. If we were to consider the lot size of the 11 existing properties in Armstrong Street, these vary in size from 782 to 3720. The average of these is 1370. Then the proposed lots are not much smaller than this average, and they are both much bigger than six of the 11 existing properties in Armstrong Street. We are very approachable and willing to modify our plans so they meet the council's requirements. We would be very happy to reconsider the siding of the garage so that it does not extend beyond the front of the house. We are very happy to consider the, reset, the rear setback. And obviously we will be removing the high solid fence in Armstrong Street and we are very happy to plant some trees along it, perhaps to help improve the streetscape. We do not agree that proposal takes from the rural field or views of Balmatton Hill or adjoining reserves. The planning report makes numerous mention of landscaping and garden, but our understanding is because of the BMO, planting of trees and vegetation will be limited and we will have to maintain a large defendable space around the home. The siding of water tanks in front of the house is so the CFA can get within four metres, and this is part Lee, that's, of the BMO that's or about three, That's about three minutes, Lee. Yep, sure. So we really want to build our home in Euroa. We want to be closer to town. We want to downsize to a uh, home that is more manageable. I have rheumatoid arthritis. This home is specifically designed for older people and people with disabilities. We are happy to work to an outcome that is suitable to everyone. I don't know if other resolutions are available today, but perhaps the decision can be deferred so that further consultation can take place and that everybody um, can, you know, all the needs can be met. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Okay, we have a, a recommendation. Uh, I'll read the recommendation. It is recommended that the council resolve to issue a notice of decision to refuse a permit in accordance with the officer's recommendation, noting that there are six recommendations involved. We've got a mover to that motion, for that motion. Councillor Mason, thank you. And a seconder. Councillor yeah. Thompson. Williams. Councillor Thompson. It was. Oh, okay. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I've had so many phone calls and contact with um, residents of Belmadam Hill Estate um, over this, and I, I look at the reasons for refusal, the six uh, reasons for, or six clauses for refusal, and the um, number six with A and B, and I, I do agree that there's um, issues with neighbourhood character. The retention basin was designed for 24 lots and the, the roof areas of those, and already there is drainage issues. Um, I, I've been up there uh, meeting with residents around drainage issues when it's been raining or, or just after rain, and it doesn't even have to be heavy rain, and, and uh, there's uh, problems, you know, gardens washing away and that sort of thing. The um, significant number of ob objections, and this doesn't include the people that have contacted me that haven't put in objections, I haven't had anyone contact me supporting this proposal. Um, and I'd like to thank all the residents that, that have con contacted me um the armstrong street it it is a woeful road and yes i have had meetings with the residents up there because it is very very ancient um very narrow and breaking up and the the block sizes and the impact on residents in granite court it, it is mostly that granite court area that are the larger blocks and and then down on barn street but in the immediate vicinity, it will affect those um, those residents in Granite Court. So I will be supporting the, the uh, motion to refuse this permit. Thanks, Councillor Mason. Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I think, well, I know that the application is for a two-lot subdivision and the development of land for a dwelling. Um, and that the dwelling, uh, as the officers point out, uh, would be considered to comply with the policy. 
Um, so the issue is about literally about the subdivision. Um, that the single dwelling, of course, has no issue. Um, it is very clear that the Balmadam Hill uh, estate uh, is a rural interface location between the between the town, the existing town of Euroa, um, and the more rural rural areas outside of it. Um, and yes, there's a diversity of housing on uh, Armstrong Street, but that is not necessarily relevant to the purpose of the Balmadam Hill Estate uh, and the planning permission that was given to that and the nature of that. And the nature was very much about the larger blocks, as has been discussed by, by the officers uh, and by the objectors. So I will be uh, agreeing with the officer's recommendation uh, to give a notice to refuse a permit here based on the fact that a subdivision um, of this allotment would be contrary to the neighbourhood character that was set out um, in the original planning permission that was given for the estate. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. Any other comments? Councillor Williams. You have to unmute your mic, Councillor Williams. <coughs> Councillor Williams. You can't hear me, but you can see me. Councillor Williams. Oi. How's that? That's better. Got it. Yeah, just a few shots. Yeah, Councillor Mason and I were up there, Mr Chairman, about a fortnight ago and had a look through the whole area there. And I understand that the concern that the people have in that corner, the the big problem I could see is drainage from probably uh, from the Goba Road and also down Armstrong Street. My concern, Mr Chairman, was that if we allow one to do that, <coughs> I, I was just going back a little bit, I was interested to hear that somebody else got a permit. Melissa may be able to help me out there or Emma uh, to subdivide on that corner block on the, no. the Strathbogie Road, Armstrong Street corner. Am I right when I heard the young girl forward say that? Through you, Mr you, Chair. Uh, Emma, could you... Uh... Yes, I can uh, answer that question. What appears on the ground is it does appear like there has been a two-lot subdivision completed on that lot because the landowner has um, erected internal fencing. However, Council, we can confirm that we have not received an application for a two-lot subdivision nor an application for a second house on that lot. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank yes. you very much. And the, and the other part of it was if we allowed this one today, <coughs> it would be open Pandora's box for everybody to be able to, to subdivide if they wanted to up there in the future. So I support the recommendation from our planners, Mr Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Any other comments? If not, I will put that uh, recommendation that Council resolve to issue a notice of decision to refuse a permit in accordance with the officer's recommendation, of which there were six of them. All those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, I guess carried unanimously. Six love. Councillor Little, could I just say thank you um, to um, all members of the Shire for taking the time to listen to what the residents have had to say and to taking time to read um, the written objections that we lodged. There, there were quite a lot of uh, objections that were put in and, and we thank you for taking the residents' concerns to heart. That's fine, Lorraine. Thank you for those words. Much appreciated. We now move on to pr uh, the... Um 6.4, Melissa, you've got this again. Planning permanent application P2020-063. Use of land for camping, caravan and camping park. Use of land for two events per annum, place of assembly, at 55 to 61 School Road, Boho. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Councillor Little. So this is an application for... Um, what are considered ancillary uses to an existing equine facility that's being run at the property. The equine facility has been running for a couple of years and incorporates some cross country as uh, some obstacle courses as well as some yard work done on the property. The proposal is to allow uh, is in two parts 
Um, the first part is to allow camping in association with those equine pursuits that might be undertaken on the property. So if they run over a couple of days, allowing people to stay with their horses while they're there for an event in terms of um, a horse training event or whatever it might be. Um, and the uh, second part of it is for two single day events to have um, twice a year on the property um, for a larger amount of people. The camping in the report has some limitations um, proposed as part of the conditioning on the permit. So um, in accordance with how the application has been structured and how the use of the land currently operates being 20 people for when they're having camping, when it's associated with, an, with the equine facility and the two single day events allowing up to 60 people twice a year for um, the events. The events um, would be for um, four hours from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. in a particular area on the property that was shown within the report and um, the, um, would have amplified music as part of that. There were 11 objections received. They raised a number of concerns. Some of them were in relation to the roads. Um, some were in relation to how the land's being currently used. And there was also some concerns raised around the amenity impacts. Um, there is some commentary on that within the report. Um, the, but from an office perspective, we have to think about what the application before us is not how the land's currently being used. The equine facility is something that is being is allowed to happen and can continue to happen. So we can only think about whether it's okay for them to have camping on site at the same time as they're running the equine facility or and or whether or not it's okay to have the place of assembly for up to 60 people for two nights a year. In this instance, it is considered that they are um, supportive uses and will help broaden the offering that is currently being undertaken on the property and is in accordance with the decision guidelines of the farming zone in that instance and that with the conditions that have been recommended by council officers it can be appropriately managed to have a minimum impact particularly with the camping it's of, of note that with allowing the camping if people are there for a two-day event they won't be coming and going for two days they'll be able to stay overnight so we'll actually have an impact of reducing traffic which is a positive um, outcome for the area it is respectfully requested that a notice of decision be granted for the permit as put through in the report before you. Thank you, Councillor Little. Thanks, Melissa. Um, I do note there were 11 objections, objectors to this proposition, but there, uh, there is not a wish for any of them to speak today. But the applicant has wished to speak, Lynn Murray. So are you there, Lynn? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, can see you, but can't see you. Can you see me or hear me? No. Can you see me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me. You've got uh, about three minutes. About three minutes. Yep, that's fine. So my name is Lynn Murray. I'm the applicant. Our equine business has been in operation and open to the public for just over two years. And having spoken to the council and the local police sergeant, Neither have received complaints in relation to disturbances, stock, traffic or safety concerns during this time. Our facility is only one of four equine mountain trail obstacle courses open to the public in Victoria. And as stated on the Shire website, our region has earned a reputation as an outstanding area for both breeding and training horses. And the Shire recognises the importance of supporting tourism and events to increase economic growth for our region. Although our contribution may be minor, Merton Park has, proved, has been proven to be a very successful draw card and contributes both via reputation and economic growth. Highly regarded trainers and clubs and individuals come far and wide to utilise our facility and having camping on site complements the entire experience. The two events requested may, may sound daunting, however, given the hours of expected noise pollution, which is four hours for each event only twice a year, and given the capped number of patrons being approximately 60, these events can be compared to a 21st birthday, 50th birthday, or similar, which ordinarily do not require a council permit. I have respectfully responded to all 11 objectors and understand that some are long-time generational farmers where change is not desirable. 
I acknowledged their concerns and had hoped that my responses would have provided relief, knowing that I did not intend on opening a caravan park nor to hold music festivals, but to continue our operation as was. In summary, Merton Park provides a venue of high quality and standards. It allows horse owners to enjoy their passion in a safe environment and to extend this to offer camping and the two events, I believe, and with respect, would have a minimal effect on our neighbourhood ambient lifestyles, their livelihoods and business operations. Our proposal does meet the objectives of the planning and local policy frameworks and the farming zone, and to offer the understanding that we don't wish to expand on what we've previously offered. This is also our home, our chosen neighbourhood, and appreciate our lovely environment. We won't do anything to risk that. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Okay, we have a recommendation. Um, Mr Chairman? Yes. Um, would you mind, could I ask the uh, applicant a question for clarification, please? Yes, yes. of course. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Lynn, um, could you just uh, perhaps explain to the council the, the notion about the music events um, and their importance um, or their intrinsic nature to the operation that you're running and propose, obviously, to continue running in the future? Why is yes. the music important? Yes, certainly. So just to give an understanding, so to have a, a structured activity weekend for our horsey people, once the horses and the events are, are finished, let's say by 4.35 o'clock in the afternoon, people come in, put their horses away, feed their horses and relax for the evening. And the thought was, we'll get a band in, have a band play while we have our barbecue, dinner, music, mingle, discuss the day, relax, hit bed after the music's finished. Literally, that's what it is, sir. It's, it's it's not even a birthday party that might start at four o'clock in the afternoon and the music's blaring and everybody's drinking and everybody gets drunk. Everybody's got to get on their horse the next morning. Um, so it's, it's literally packing up the day's activities, having a barbecue lunch, uh, barbecue dinner as we do, that's probably over by 6.30, 7 o'clock. The band's already set up on the veranda. The band plays for the four hours. The band packs up, goes home. Pretty much people say, good night, go into bed, I'm buggered. And they go to bed, they camp in swags in their float or tents beside their float. And they're up again at 6 o'clock in the morning to feed their horses, give their horses half an hour, an hour after being fed saddle up their horses and we're back into the activities for the day. Okay, thanks, Lynn. Thank you. Okay, so we have a recommendation that Council resolve to issue a notice of decision to grant a permit in accordance with the officer's recommendation, of which there are 32, with one planning note and two environmental notes. We've got someone that would move that recommendation. Councillor Gardner, thank you. And the seconder. Councillor Williams, thank you. Councillor Gardner. Unmute your mic. Thank no. you, Mr Chairman, for reminding me. Uh, Mr Chairman, in initially reading this application, it sounded as though there was going to be a caravan park set up uh, to be used as a caravan park and it sounds as though there were going to be music festivals. On closer reading and understanding and the discussions we've had and the information that the uh, applicant has just supplied, it's obviously not going to be that. It is a continuation of the business that she is currently running, which seems to be a successful business in that uh, area of uh, the Shire. Uh, I see it uh, as being an addition to the offering of the equine facilities that are uh, available in the Shire and I, 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 I think it is a, a good use of the land. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thanks, Councillor Gardner. Councillor Williams. Yes, I, uh, I've looked at this pretty seriously and I just feel that maybe that uh, the, the way that 
I looked at it earlier was of the music of an evening, and I'm just wondering if, you know, I, I was looking to see whether the music could be quietened down or whatever the case may I'm not quite sure of the decibels on the music. I think that was part of the concern that I had was the, the, the music playing late at night. But as Lee has said, that, uh, and I agree, and, uh, that uh, they'd be very tired by about 10 o'clock most of the, the competitors anyway, so they'd be looking for somewhere to lay down. I remember when they had the Olympic Championships here in Yarrow at the horse jumping that uh, they used to camp there overnight and they'd have a bit of a bit of a barbecue and, a, and but they were in in bed very reasonably early, you know. They'd have music and uh, reasonably early. So I'm just one and just like to see that we support the horse industry. This is the horse capital of Victoria, and I think any anybody can bring something to our community, tourism wide, and, and give people an opportunity. To, to be able to do what they like. It's like a saw. We all like sport in some way, and a lot of people play footy, cricket, or whatever the case may be, but there's an enormous amount of people ride horses too for relaxation at the weekend, so I'm supporting the application, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Williams. Are there any other comments? Councillor Thompson. Uh, Mr Chairman, I would like to move an amendment to the recommendation that's before us, please. Um, sure. So my uh, amendment uh, is uh, to replace the existing uh, 2A in the recommendation uh, with the words, place of assembly, only patrons associated with the equine activity are permitted, in brackets, i.e. no more than 20 patrons. Uh, in relation to uh, 2B, to replace the words in 2B1, uh, with no more than 20 patrons when associated with the equine facility or associated events, and in brackets, uh, events twice per annum, uh, full stop. Campsite C, as per the endorsed plan, must not be used for any camping. Um, to delete condition 2B2, uh, that is there. Uh, to replace the wording in condition 9, uh, with no amplified sound is to be used in conjunction with events. And to replace the wording in condition uh, one, uh, to uh, say, and I won't uh, read the first part of it because it's the same, but to uh, essentially say that such plans must be generally in accordance with the plan submitted, but modified to show in brackets, A, the removal of area C for camping. Thank you, Councillor Thompson. I think that's been circulated to all councillors. They have probably got that in written form in front of them. Um, have the planners, I, I will ask the planners if there's a comment to be made here. I think removing um, area C, move area C from camping, have some ramifications. Uh, Matt, Mr Chair, can I just interrupt for a second, please? Sorry. Yes. Just from a governance perspective, we need yes. to know if the mover and the seconder accept the amendment before we discuss. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Okay, uh, I, I will ask the mover and the uh, Councillor um, Gardner and Councillor Williams, you happy to accept that amendment? Councillor Gardner? Can't hear. No, no, Councillor, no, Chair, Mr. Chairman. I think the uh, original proposal should stand. Councillor Williams. Yeah, I, I support the original uh, proposal, Mr. Chairman. Could I ask say yeah, just, something? Well, just, just before we do, sorry, Councillor Williams. Yep. So you're not supporting that amendment? No. Oh. Okay. I've got to just call on Dawn for a, for a. Bit of guidance here. Uh, three, so is that amendment, has that amendment now got to be put? Uh, three, Mr. Mayor. Um, no, the amendment has lapsed because the mover and seconder um, have rejected it. However, depending on what happens with that motion, another motion can be put in terms of um, that new motion with the the changes to the the recommendation that Councillor Thompson has put forward. 
I'm sorry, you just might have to. Do, so, this amendment does not have to be put to the vote. I've got you, Alice. Well, I've got you down, Councillor Thompson. Hang on, I just want to get it right. Miss, so hang on, I'm Steph. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just getting it right with Dawn. Could you just repeat that for me, please? So, an, an amendment to a motion needs to be accepted by the mover and the seconder. Right, and, and it that, wasn't in this case. That has been declined. So, we need to deal with the motion that is on the table, which is the motion moved by Councillor Williams and Councillor Gardner. If that motion is lost, we can then go to the motion or the amendment to the motion moved by Councillor Thompson as a separate motion. Okay, thank you. Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I could just um, uh, perhaps ask the governance officer. Um, so, wouldn't it be the case if my amendment uh, receives a seconder that the amendment is just, is dealt with as a distinct item in itself, uh, and if the amendment uh, was passed, that we then would form uh, an amended motion? I thought I thought that the notion of whether the original mover and seconder um, agreed to an amendment was for expediency of how it was dealt with. But um, in our meeting procedure, a councillor is entitled to move an amendment, have that amendment seconded, and have that amendment debated and either agreed or defeated. Okay, I'll have to go to, we'll go to Dawn here. Dawn? Yes, through the, through the chair, we, we can go through that process if you wish. Um, the... Uh, Support from the mover and the seconder is for expediency um, and also just for clarity. So the, the motion that is on the table, um, you would need to ask for a seconder to Councillor Thompson's amendment, given that the mover and the seconder have declined. And then would we put that amendment? Then you put that, that then that amendment, if it is seconded, is debated. And then you put that, that becomes the motion that is um, put at them. And then you have to decide on the amendment first. And then if that is lost, you go back to the original motion. Thank you. So we, ha we have a, an amendment from Councillor Thompson. And um, I, I, we've all heard it. I, I presume we have all heard it and understand it. So I'll ask for a seconder for that. Is there a seconder? Oh, got, got you. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Rayburn as a seconder. Councillor Thompson. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. So the, the intent of my amendment, I, I, I think that the, uh, the equine um, uh, entity uh, is a great addition to the area. Um, I think that it's wonderful when people clearly have, have a passion for a particular activity, in this case, equine activity, and you turn that into a business which is uh, then provides uh, enjoyment and skill building for a whole range of other people, uh, I absolutely support. I think that is, that is a great initiative. Um, uh, my amendment uh, deals with the uh, amenity uh, impact of what is being proposed here. Um, and really, in, in my mind, what is a, a relatively small part of what, are being, what is being proposed, which is to do uh, with noise. Um, we have uh, 11 unresolved objections. Um, I think clearly the neighbouring properties um, uh, to the applicants have a lot of concern about the impact of amplified noise on their amenity and well-being. And I believe it is the role of council to protect the amenity of its ratepayers. Uh, I think that is, is very clear. And I think particularly in, in this case, I think this enterprise could continue uh, without uh, a significant amenity impact on its neighbouring properties. Uh, and I urge councillors um, to see that as their responsibility to find a way forward that protects the amenity of adjoining properties but also allows the enterprise to go forward. And that is what my amendment does. Thank you. Councillor Rober. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. Yeah, I support Councillor um, <clears throat> Alistair's comments, uh, Mr Councillor Thompson, on this proposal, this amendment, because I really support uh, Lynn Murray on her equine um, park. I think it's a great opportunity for everybody to go out there and learn how to ride, use their known abilities or unabilities to be able to uh, promote themselves. 
and I believe Merton Park has really done well in it in the environment it's in. But the part I do not agree on, and I'll be quite open about this, is the music of an evening. Um, I do not believe that should be in such an event happen in such a beautiful valley out there in Boho. So that's the reason why I support Councillor Thompson's uh, amendment, because it's mainly about the amenity of the people who live there. And the reason why I've asked for ca uh, the camping area C to be removed, there has been a uh, cattle yard across the road for going on for nearly 100 years, I believe. That's what I've written, written, uh, read in the uh, submissions. And uh, I don't want to impede on their operations. And so that's the reason why I've asked for the uh, camping seed to be removed from the planning also. Thank you, Councillor Rayburn. Any other comments? Sarah, am I allowed to comment or not? It's Lynn, the applicant. Um, uh, should we put the amendment? Um, through you, Mr Chair, we can't have any further debate from the members of the public. Thank you. Beg your pardon? We can't have any further comment from members of the public, Fine, Mr thank Chair. You. Okay. Even the applicant. Yep. Okay, so we have an amendment. Um, from Councillor Thompson, um, would you? Before I put that, would you like Councillor Thompson to repeat it? Okay, I put that amendment as as put by Councillor Thompson. All those for? All those against? That's four, that's the, the amendment is defeated four two. Thank you. We now go back to the uh, original recommendation, and that is it recommended that council resolve to issue a notice of decision to grant a curb permit in accordance with this officer's recommendations, of which there are 32, one planning note, and two environmental notes. So all those in favor of that recommendation? One, two, one, two, three, four. That's carried. All those against? That's carried four, two. I'll have to call a division, please, Mr Chairman. Sure. Call a division for that. All those in favour? That's Councillor Mason, Councillor Williams, Councillor Little, Councillor Gardner. All those against? Mm -hmm. Councillor Thompson and Councillor Chris. Rayburn, Councillor Rayburn, sorry, Chris. Okay, we move on now to um, uh, 7.1. This is, there's a change here. This is in the hands of Manager of Planning and Investment, Emma Kubel, and it is other business, 7.1, your township strategy, the final report. That's Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, last planning committee meeting, this item was in the agenda and as a result, the item was actually deferred, so it has been in the agenda for some time. Uh, there is a couple of changes that I will like to highlight. Um, firstly, within the recommendation, we'd like to acknowledge that further consultation as a result of the deferred report at the 21 July 2020 Planning Committee, as highlighted within this report, and to the uh, Council formally adopts the Aurora Township Strategy as attached. Further along within the report on page number 106 of the agenda, you will see in addition within the, the report, um, which highlights the further consultation that has been undertaken. The, as a result of the deferment, uh, there was a review of the Seven Creeks Reserve Euroa Master Plan and the Euroa Sale Yard Stage 3 Plan, which was carried out by council officers. Consultation was undertaken with the Friends of the Sevens in regards to the Seven Creeks Reserve Master Plan, and it's noted that the Friends of the Sevens are currently reviewing that plan. The reason for the removal um, is that there's some inconsistencies as far as development that has occurred over a period of time 
the main portion obviously being the Euroa Caravan Park where there has been a change of ownership and significant investment now put into that caravan park. The Seven Creeks Reserve uh, Master Plan referred to some re the removal of that caravan park, park so there is some inconsistency and hence the need to remove that plan. There is still reference within the document to that plan, which does allow the Friends of the Sevens to, as part of their review, bring that back to Council for further consideration um, and direction as far as what that plan will do. The sale yards plan was also reviewed and as a result of some funding that has recently been received, it was identified that we needed to ensure that that plan was consistent um, and up to best practice for today's standards. So that plan has also been um, removed uh, with some new wording in there to review and implement. And today, Council, um, the recommendation before you is as per the report to formally recognise the further consultation and to formally adopt the Euroa Township strategy as attached. Thank you, Mr Chair. Thank you, Emma. Um, so we have a recommendation in front of us. Would someone like to move as such? Uh, Councillor Mason, thank you. So, seconded. Councillor Williams, thank you. Councillor Mason. Yes, thank you, Mr Chairman. This is a uh, absolutely great report. It's a, an ec eclectic mix of recommendations for the Euro Township and um, and all of them. They're, they're just um, you go to the public and you just got no idea what's going to come out. And uh, it, it's great. Looking forward, it's fantastic to see all these ideas, all these submissions come in, and to progress Euro into the future. And some of them, uh, and I'll read out just a few of them, new canopy tree plantings in strategic locations, determine the housing needs of an ageing population, encourage appropriate residential infill cons cons consolidation and development of vacant unconstrained general residential zone land as a priority over rezoning of new land for ur urban purposes, address existing infrastructure service and land supply issues with Euroa, Improve pedestrian and cycle connectivity and supporting infrastructure throughout the township. Resolve pedestrian and vehicle conflict areas. Improve north-south connections across the existing rail corridor, and which is a uh, really great topic at the moment uh, with the replacement of the overpass. Upgrade streetscapes and entry points of Euroa. Increase weather protection, sun and rain, within Euroa's town centre, which they're talking about the um, verandas. And it just goes on and on. There's just so many different ideas and um, it's great to see the community engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mason. Councillor Williams. Yeah, just a couple on Mr. Councillor Mason covered that very well. There is a couple of things. And I'd like to ask our, our, our planner, or one of our planners, and Emma. Emma, I've gone into number 138, page 138, and down to number 14. And I, I spoke to you, we spoke the other day about particular trees being grown in, in the community and I was just wondering whether you'd like to just give an overview with what can be grown in, the, in, around, our, in around our towns for safety. Certainly through you, Mr Chair. Um, as part of this consultation, we have had... Um, engagement with relevant authorities and so the CFA have been one of those authorities. So council currently has a street tree planting um, schedule that identifies the type of trees that can be planted in road reserves. In addition to that, the CFA have commented and provided us um, with the planting guideline for different types of areas, so urban, in, uh, urban areas on properties in rural locations. And it is a lot of discussion around native vegetation, um, not that not to use it, but be to be mindful of in regards to if you're using native shrubs, the, the spacing between them, et cetera. So that is a publicly available document and available on the CFA website as well. I hope that is, answers your question. Yeah, it does. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks, Mr Chair. Any other comments? Before I put that recommendation, uh, and the recommendation is that Council 1 acknowledges the further consultation as a result 
of the deferred report that the 21st of July 2020 Planning Committee has highlighted within this report, and two, to formally adopt formally adopts the Euroa Township strategy as attached. All those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. That is carried unanimously at six zip. Thank you. And finally, we move on to um, 7.2, planning applications received between the 21st of June to the 24th, 5th of June to the 24th of July 2020. Um, it's in Emma Kubel's hands, but the report is that the report recommendation is the report be noted. We have a mover there. I'll move it, Mr. Jim. Thank you. Cuts <laughs> Williams. Seconder. A seconder. I'll stop. No. Okay. Councillor Mason, thank you. That's just the report we noted, so that is carried. That, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our planning committee meeting for today. Thank you all. Thank you particularly to those people who have participated online and uh, have done a great job. Safe driving home and keep safe and out of the way of the virus. Goodbye. Beautiful.